Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first spring webinar. If you're a regular to our webinars, you probably noticed that we started inviting guests to our monthly broker webinars sometime last year. And we're really excited to bring to you a very special guest today, Bob Berg. Many of you have probably read his book. Uh, he is a best-selling co-author of The Go-Giver. My name is Lisa Collins, and I am the Director of Broker Concierge Services here at PrimePay. I'm really excited to get a conversation started, something other than the COVID-19, right? Take, take a little break from all the technical stuff that we've been listening to and hearing about, and really sit back and hear a very positive message. The, the discussion will be about 30 minutes, and we will post the recording as we always do to our Broker Concierge YouTube channel. So you can go back and listen to it, or you can share it with somebody who maybe needs a positive message. As an introduction before we get started, um, to our special guest, Bob Berg, he is a sought after speaker at company leadership and sales conferences, sharing the platform with everyone from today's business leaders and broadcast personalities to even former US presidents. <laughs> Bob is the author of a number of books on sales, marketing, and influence, with total book sales of well over a million copies. His book, The Go-Giver, actually the first one that I read many years ago, he co-authored with John David Mann, and that book itself sold over 925,000 copies, and it's been translated into 28 languages. Bob is an advocate, supporter, and defender of the free enterprise system, believing that the amount of money one makes is direction, directly proportional to how many people they serve. He is also an unapologetic animal fanatic and is a past member of the board of directors of Furry Friends Adoption Clinic and Ranch in his town of Jupiter, Florida. Welcome, Bob. Great to have you. Thank you, Lisa. Great to be here. Hi, everybody. So, so let's get into the go-giver way. As uh, your tagline says, give exceptional value, enjoy extraordinary results. And I have read your books, and I actually watched some of your YouTube videos, and your message really is so uplifting. And I feel like it's a perfect time to bring this message to our audience. So to begin, at a very high level, what is the premise of your book series? Yeah, that's a great question, Lisa. The, um, the, the basic premise is simply that shifting your focus, and this is really the key, shifting your focus uh, from getting to giving. Now, when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that not only is this a, a more pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. And not for some you know, way out there, woo woo type of reason. It actually, when you think about it, it makes very rational, very logical sense. Because when you're that person who can take their focus off of themselves and place it on others, people feel good about you. People want to get to know you. They begin to like you. They trust you. They want to be a part of your life, a part of your business, etc. cetera. And, uh, you know, obviously more sales are going to take place when, when that happens. You know, it, it's interesting because when I, uh, often when I speak at a, a um, sales event, I'll say that, you know, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet right uh, no one's gonna buy from you because you need the money and they're not even gonna buy from you because you're a really nice person who believes in what you do no they're gonna buy from you because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so and that's the only reason anyone should buy from you or from me or from anyone else and the only way they are going to understand that they're better off by, by, by buying is because you have focused on them in such a way that you've been able to communicate that immense value that you bring. When you think about it, selling by definition 
is simply discovering what the other person wants, needs, or desires and helping them to get it. And that happens only when we're able to place our focus totally on them. Lisa, I may have lost you. Are you there? I am. I'm sorry. In, in your Go-Giver book, you, you talk about these five laws that will bring you both personal effectiveness and also the professional success. So is that what you're talking about here when you just gave that, that intro? Are you attributing that to the five laws? Yeah, the laws are, are based on that, on, on that premise. All the laws uh, work off of that premise. So the five laws themselves, as you see on the screen, the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. And those are the five laws that when used in, together in conjunction, Okay, not, you know, so not one, two, three, or even four of them, but all five in conjunction, that is what allows uh, the, the type of stratospheric success we talk about in the book uh, to take place. So can you define just very briefly each one? So what does law of value mean and what does law of compensation mean? Just a, a, a quick synopsis. Sure. The law of value says your true worth, in the business sense, of course, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Now, this sounds sort of counterintuitive when you first hear that, give more in value than I take in payment, but how do you make a profit that way when I go broke? Uh, and uh, of course, we simply need to understand the difference between price and value. Price is a dollar figure. It's a dollar amount. It's finite. It, is what it is. Value, on the other hand, is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something, to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to that person, in this case, your prospective client, that they will willingly exchange their you know money time energy you know what have you in order to have this while at the same time you make a very healthy profit um that you know that's it in a in a that's law number one in a nutshell so you're giving more in value than you take in payment uh so both parties are actually coming out ahead um because you're bringing immense value to that other person and so you're actually uh you know in between just the you know the products you sell the knowledge you bring the experience you provide everything together you're giving them much more in value than what they're paying for but of course you're also making a very healthy profit which you should and you know we can talk later about if you'd like about um uh that when we talk about giving more in value than we take in pain we're not talking about giving things away for free absolutely not at all it's providing such immense value that you're actually able to charge a higher price than your competitors law number two is the law of compensation this one says your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. So where law number one says give more in value than you take in payment, law number two tells us the more people whose lives you touch with the exceptional value you provide, uh, the more money with which you'll be rewarded. So law number one represents your potential income, uh, but law number two, which talks about how many lives you impact with that value, that's your actual income. Law number three is the law of influence. And this one says your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Again, sounds counterintuitive when you first hear it, though when you think about it, uh, the greatest leaders, top influencers, highest producing salespeople, this is simply how they run their lives and conduct their businesses. They're always uh, looking out for that other person's interest, placing their interests first. Now, let me qualify that though quickly if I may. When we say place the other person's interests first, we certainly don't mean you should be anyone's doormat or a, a martyr or self-sacrificial in any way. Absolutely not. It's simply as Joe, the protege, learned in the story from several of the mentors, the golden rule of business, certainly of sales, is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. 
and there's simply no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you in others than by genuinely and authentically moving from that I focus or me focus that so many salespeople have to an other focus, <clears throat> looking to make your win all about their win. Law number four is the law of authenticity. And this one says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. In the story, uh, Deborah, one of the mentors, explained that all the, the skills in the world, the sales skills, people's uh, technical skills and people's skills, all of those skills, they're as important as they are, and they are all indeed very, very important. They're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. But when you do, when you, as we like to say, show up as yourself day after day, week after week, month after month, people feel good about you. They feel safe with you. They feel confident with you because they know who they're getting. They know who you are. They know you. They like you, they love you, they trust you, they want to be in relationship with you, and they want to do business with you or refer you and or refer you to others. Law number five is the law of receptivity. And this one says the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Really, this is nothing more than understanding that just as we, we breathe out, we also have to breathe in right? Uh, we breathe out carbon dioxide, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out, which is giving, and we breathe in, which is receiving. Unfortunately, the messages we get from so much of the world around us, and this can be from, you know, the time we're born, from upbringing, environment, schooling, news media, television shows, movies, certainly, uh, you know, they, the world around us gives us a horribly negative messages, message about money and about abundance. And you think, gosh, anyone who has money is evil. And if someone's made a lot of money, they did it on the backs of others or by step. You know, it, it's a big world. There's plenty of people out there that do lousy things. But no, especially in a free market based environment where no one is forced to do business with you. The only way you can earn a lot of money is by providing a lot of value to a lot of people. So, but what happens is it really on an unconscious level gets into, into our heads. And so that's why people can sometimes sabotage themselves from being able to really receive the kind of money that they have, that they have earned through, through doing great work. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not a matter of, are you a giver or a receiver? No, you're both, you're a giver and a receiver. See, uh, Contrary to the message we get from the world around us, giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. They're simply two sides of the very same coin. They work together in tandem. This is also, now, you give, you give and receive, but you focus on the giving because that's how life works, right? You focus on the giving of value, you focus on the giving, and then you allow the receiving, and this is just one more quick point. This is why we say that money is simply an echo of value, right? It's the, the thunder to values lightning, which means nothing more than the value must be the focus. The value comes first. The money you receive is simply a, a very natural result of the value you provided. Yeah, that's an interesting analogy, the, the thunder and the lightning. I like that. So in that discussion, which you were just talking about um, money being evil or negative, um, it reminded me of something that I read in your book that decisions really shouldn't be solely based on whether or not it makes money. Um, you say it's, it's, that's not a bad question to ask. It, actually, it's a good question. It's just a bad first question. So I think a lot of salespeople and agency owners on, on this um, this webinar might disagree with you. They might even say that it's the only question when it comes to business. You know, um, does it make money? Is the decision. So what do you can you expand on that? Sure. And and this actually this occurred in the original book when Pindar, the main mentor, was talking to Joe, and Joe was talking about something about you know, making a killing and about and and Pindar was sort of saying, well, maybe that's not the right place to look first. And Joe says, are you saying making money, asking if something will make money is a 
a, a bad question? No, and like you just said, no, it's a great question. Just a bad first question. Why? And then he said, first ask, does it serve? Okay. Uh, in other words, we could ask the question, is there a market for it? Uh, is this something that is going to provide immense value to others? Focus on that. Because if you go in focused on the money, uh, again, let's go back to the, the, the point that this person's not buying from you because you're interested in their money. Okay. Uh, so if you go in focused on will it serve, then the, they're much more likely to do business with you. The money's going to come. Now, by the way, um, we also say again, the money is important in terms of, you know, if something might serve, but if it's not profitable, then that's also a question. So if you're, you know, going in there and you're so anxious to get a client that you're giving away the store and not making a profit, that's also a question. So yes, first as does it serve? If you, and if it does serve them, okay, and it serves them very, very well, you should also be making a very healthy profit. But first it's the serving, then it's thinking, does it make a profit? But also, it, it's also important to ask, does it serve? Okay, is there a market for it? And then, is there profit in it for you? Is there money as well? So they're both important. It's just that one is where the focus is, and that's the key. To the degree that you focus on the value, the money is gonna follow. Focus on the money, and it's much less likely to, to take place. So let's go back to, I got trigger finger happy there um, and jumped ahead. Sorry about that. Let's, let's go back to value though. When you're talking about free service, this really resonates with me because when, when Obamacare or the healthcare reform came around, um, insurance, group health insurance really became more of a commodity. And the discussion at that time with our broker partners was more on how are you going to be a consultant? How can you focus on delivering value? Because that insurance product no longer is a value, it's a commodity. And what happened, what we saw is value to many meant giving away free services. Um, so how can they get away from giving the, like a Ben admin platform, for example, will cost them some money, but they're giving it to their client for free. So can you share with uh, the consultants on the, on the call, how can they add value without costing too much and giving free services away? Right. Whenever you're dealing in a commodity, okay, um, we have to realize that the client, the potential client, the prospective client is, is by and large, if they're just looking at the commodity itself and there's nothing it's, if there's nothing to distinguish the products or services, and in this case there isn't, okay, um, then it's always going to come down to who has the lowest price. And unless your last name is uh, Walmart or Amazon.com, which it isn't, trying to make low price your unique selling proposition, <laughs> right, is not a, a good way to do business. It's it's not um, uh, it's not productive. It's not profitable and I don't believe it's sustainable okay not if you want to have a, a, a lucrative fun business that makes you feel good about it and one that you're able to serve a lot of people because you are you're staying in business and you're making enough to be able to do that so basically the the the, the answer is in order to communicate that additional value that would distinguish you from from your competition you've got to be that value it's you they're going to buy you've got to be that value now how do you do that? Fortunately, there are dozens, if not hundreds of ways to communicate that additional value, but they tend to come down to five, what we call elements of value. And those elements of value are excellence, consistency, attention, empathy, and appreciation. When you think of excellence, sure, you think about, hey, you know your work, you know your job, you know your products. Um, but we can also take it a step further and say that, and, and I don't know how many of you listening to this uh, work in a very niche targeted market. So if you do, it will be a little bit easier than what I'm about to suggest. But regardless, you want to know the business of the client, the potential client, the prospective client so well 
that not only when you um, when you're discovering what they need, want, and desire, you know things, you know more about their business than they know about their business in terms of how your products and services relate to it and how you can help. So what that allows you to do is to add insight and help them understand where they may have challenges and issues that they don't even know they have that you can then step in and be able to, to come through and add that kind of wonderful value uh, through your solutions. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's excellence. That's being able to, to be that resource for that, that person. Uh, excellence, though, is also how you make people feel uh, when they call the office. Are they greeted in the appropriate way? Uh, are they greeted after a couple of rings um, uh, by someone who sounds as though they're they're you know glad to hear from them, not not as though they have had their day interrupted, even if even if they have two or three calls going. I remember when that person calls, all they know is they're calling and and so forth. Uh, when you talk with the uh, administrative assistant. Are you treating that person with the respect that he or she deserves? Um, are, you, are you returning calls a, on a timely basis? Are you um, returning emails on a, a timely basis? Which doesn't mean you have to jump through hoops, but it means you're always, at every interaction, at every touch point, you always have in mind how this other person feels. Because if they feel good about themselves, they're going to feel good about you. And if they feel good about you, they're going to be more interested in, in hearing from you and knowing how you can bring value to them through your product or service. Uh, that's excellence. Uh, consistency is simply, you know, being that same way every time. Consistency is important because uh, that's been hardwired into us from the days of the... Uh, uh, our ancestors, the hunters and gatherers, who you know every day was literally, not figuratively, literally a matter of survival, right? You had to know uh, who in your 150-person tribe you could trust, who had your back, and who might uh, club you in the back. <laughs> you, know, you had to know what the sounds and the distance meant. You had to know what the bent twigs meant and what the footprints and the mud meant, and it had to be the same day after day after week after month after year. Well, we don't have those same survival issues these days, but again, it's been hardwired into us and we crave consistency. We want to believe we're consistent and show up consistently, but we demand in someone that we trust that they be consistent. Hey, we all know those people who they're one way one day and the next time you see them, they're, they're someone else. Uh, one day they're just sweet, kind, wonderful. Next time you see them, they're a monster and you almost <laughs> They'd just be a monster all the time because at least you'd know what to expect. Half the issue with them is you never know who you're getting. So consistency is key. When you can, uh, you and your staff, and this is, you know, at every touch point, by the way, as I talk about these, at every touch point from when you first meet that person, whether it's an inbound uh, uh, request over your website or whether you've met them at a, a local mixer or a charity event, uh, from the time you first meet them, uh, to the, uh, the, the relationship building and the follow-up and the follow-through and the presentation and the referrals, every aspect to the degree that you can communicate these elements of value, that is the degree you distinguish yourself from your, your competition and, and take price out of the issue. So excellence, consistency, attention to detail. It means you are seeing them not just as a potential client, you're seeing them as a human being. And it means you you listen to them and you get to know them uh, other aside from what they do just as far as business goes. By the way, with the internet these days, that's even easier because you can find out what some of their personal interests are and you can bring those up, work them into conversation. But you know, when you talk to them, when you ask them and you find out about their family, their recreation, their their favorite cause, whatever, these are the things when you can know and talk about that and ask questions about that uh you know that's when again you're different from from everyone else uh empathy is probably the most important business skill most important people skill there is uh you know i, I empathy is i is defined as the identification uh with or vicarious experiencing of another person's feelings but you know we don't always know how someone else feels sometimes we can't relate to how they feel 
But empathy isn't necessarily that you understand how they feel. It's understanding that they're feeling something and that this something is distressful to them and that you are there to help them through it. Because remember, while you do this all the day and you provide these wonderful benefits and uh, these this wonderful help for, uh, uh, you know, they don't do this all the time. So they may have had a bad experience with a, an organization such as yours, or they may be wanting to make a change, or they may never have heard of something like this. And this is totally way off what they ever thought. Okay, see, you know how good it is. You know how beneficial it is, but they don't. So we need to be able to really understand that they are feeling that, and we ask them questions in order to make them feel safe in bringing up these questions to us. And then uh, the last one is uh, appreciation or gratitude. And that's simply really focusing on what's right, focusing on, on what brings you joy. Uh, so what does that have to do with creating value? Because gratitude is attractive to people. Someone who has gratitude has happiness and happy people are attractive. People want to be around happy people. People feel confident and good being around happy people. So, you know, all these things, and, and it's not just a matter of having gratitude, but expressing gratitude. And this means that when you meet someone at, a, at an event somewhere, uh, it means you send them a personalized handwritten thank you note. Hi, Gary, or hi, Anne, or thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you at the so-and-so mixer last night. Uh, uh, sounds like your, your business is doing terrific. I wish you the best of continued success. You know, whatever it happens to be, and then put it in a number 10 envelope, hand stamp it, hand address it. When you're talking to a, um, when you talk to the, uh, uh, the administrative assistant, okay? Even if you didn't get through to his or her boss, send a handwritten personalized thank you note, thanking them for their time, okay? Uh, you know, it's amazing how that will will help things kind of help the relationship sort of of go along. So, and there's there's many things that we can do when we talk to people that really again create value just through the conversation. When you meet someone at an event, rather than taking time to talk about, rather than focusing on your business, which right now when they first meet you, they are not interested. Okay, instead ask them about their business and ask them questions such as how did you get started in the so-and-so business or you know and what do you enjoy most about what you do here's a great question to ask i call this the one key question that will separate you from everyone else it's to ask this person how can i know if someone i'm speaking with would be a a great prospect for you or how can i know if someone i'm speaking with would be a, a good connection for you or someone you'd like to meet uh, a nice way of segueing into that is to say, you know, I always love connecting good people with other good people. Tell me, how can I know if someone I'm speaking with is the, the perfect prospect for you? And so when we do that, again, we're focusing on them. Excellent consistency, attention, empathy, and appreciation, a gratitude. These are those elements of value that, that separate, that distinguish you from everyone else. So there's a lot of content right there, really valuable stuff. The, the five elements, it, it really highlights when I, I recall reading and thinking, gosh, you're really throwing the, the sales approach on its head. It's not about the close and the pipeline's not about the numbers and there isn't an elevator pitch. You know, th that really highlights what you're speaking about there. Just want to kind of end this with um there was a chapter in your go giver sell more book and it was on economy and you talked about when times are tough that the go giver principle really shines and when the economy goes into a tailspin it's easy to get in panic mode and i kind of think we're all a little feeling that a little bit now but most people will put on the brakes during these times um what does the go-giver way look like during these unprecedented times we're currently going through? Yeah, it means that what you do, because it is a tough time, and you know, uh, one thing I, I always get annoyed with in the personal development movement is when people try to act like nothing's ever wrong or nothing's ever bad. <laughs> you know, sometimes life is horrible, sometimes things bad happen, uh, and we're in the midst of something right now that's terrible, terribly upsetting. 
Uh, once we understand that and once we are ready to deal with that, then we can now say, okay, what can I do? What do I have control of? Because there's a lot we can't control right now. But what can we control? We can control the way we decide to use this time, whether it's to even connect deeper with our families, whether it's to read and study more and, and get more proficient at, at what, or excellent at what we what we do. It's also a time we can we can focus on bringing value to others in ways that maybe are a little different from the usual business way. Uh, you know, it might mean that we reach out to our prospective customers and clients, and we we uh, provide them some information, some good value-based information uh, that might help them in terms of things they can do during this uh, during this um, situation. Uh, it might also go totally off of business and say, and you know, I know people who are um, uh, making, you know not webinars, but the webinar platforms available, and they have someone come on who has a, a specific topic they're good at, maybe history, and they have a fun way of teaching history and doing a class for all the kids who are who the parents are now having to have at home, homeschooling and, and so forth, and so it gives the parents a, a break and somebody teaching you know something in history that's really fun. Uh, I know people who've hired magicians to do you know a 20 minute set uh, there's, and, and it might not be up to hire someone. You might just know someone who can do that. Or it might be, I know one person, she works for AT&T, and what she did for all the, the children and the parents uh, is she uh, did a thing. She was reading children's stories, and she was dressed as uh, uh, Elsa, the princess from Frozen. Uh, I never saw the movie. I still haven't seen E.T., you know, so I'm a little behind the times, but but uh, I know who Elsa is, and and so she, you know, read children's stories, and and she to give the parents a break, you know. So there's lots of things we can do. Just you know, you ask yourself, how can I somehow, some way, bring value to those in my sphere of influence? Uh, and also, you know, totally aside from business, if you can, and I'm sure many of you are doing this, reaching out to your elderly neighbors making sure they know you're there in case there's any issues and just to let them know you you're thinking about them and if they need something from the store again this isn't business this is just being a person but you know it's it's all those things we can do but but certainly to to connect with uh with our, our prospects customers and clients and as you're going through the internet finding other ways that people are dealing with this and still being able to do business passing those tips along to them but just make it so very focused on them. And then as this thing begins to, to blow over, which it eventually will, um, you're gonna find that all the work you've done now while your competitors are kind of, you know, sleeping in or, or doing whatever they're doing uh, is, gonna, is gonna pay off. So this is a great segue into what I wanted to mention about staying in touch with you. Now is the time to really sharpen your focus, um, you've got some time to hopefully um, learn some new skill sets, learn the go-giver way. So a couple things that I just pulled off of your site, ways to get in touch with you. LinkedIn, certainly um, a great way. That's actually how we first got uh, connected here. You also have your Facebook page. Yeah. Show all of this. Your Thanks. Twitter. You got all the social media going on here. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah, a little late to the game with Instagram, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's you know the fast moving one that's just recently started really taking off. So, and YouTube, you've got a wonderful YouTube channel. As I said, I've watched a lot of that content as well. So I Thanks. encourage you all to reach out. Um, you've got a website. Well, actually, two, thegogiver.com and berg.com. Yeah, you know, if, the, um, if, if they go to berg.com and they scroll down to the um, podcast, that we have. Oh, okay. Oh, no, either way, that, this one's good, yep. too. That's the Go Giver one. And the, the Go Giver podcast, which I'm not doing anymore, but we have something like 153 archived episodes. So if you want to binge listen to some of those, you, you certainly can. Um, and then, uh, and yes, that when you, when you, uh, if you decide to to join the site, you know, to, to register on the site, you get a special report, endless prospects, the the go giver way, and uh, 
and then yeah at bird.com we have the um oh yeah well we have that we'll be we have to cancel, of course a couple of endless referrals workshops yeah. the one April and june but we tend to have those either in orlando florida or jupiter and that's two days uh we limit it to uh, 30 people i think last one was 25 people but we decided 30 we could we can handle and it's two days of really intense putting together your endless referrals system so a lot of great ways to get content of yours, to get in touch with you. Um, really appreciate uh, your time today. We also have taken some of your um, your ways, if you will. Um, many of you are familiar with our broker concierge program, and we really have built that to provide you with tools and resources, value as we've discussed today, um, to help you grow your book of business, to retain your clients, to move up market. But wanted to point out a couple things that we recently have um, done. If you go to support.primepay.com, we have a, a COVID-19 tile there. And if you click on it, it is filled with resources, um, content, recorded webinars, all around the different acts that are passed, the resources available. So please go there and access all that content to help you through um, you know, steering your clients and what to do during these um, interesting times we're going through. Reach out to us at concierge at primepay.com if you want to become a, uh, a broker concierge partner. It is a complimentary program. And you can listen to this recording on our broker concierge YouTube channel. And before we let everybody go, I want to end by offering a gift. And that gift is the gift of learning more about the Go-Giver Way. So we are providing 10 autographed books, um, The Go-Giver Sell More. And in order to raffle these off without a spinning wheel or anything like that, if you would be so kind, Bob, to give me 10 numbers, and I'm just going to take those 10 numbers and look at our attendee list, from the GoToWebinar, and I, we will mail those books out to those 10 recipients. Kind of put you on the spot here, but if you just give me 10 numbers. 10 numbers? From like what, zero to 200? Uh, yeah, maybe zero to 300 or so. Zero to three. Okay, okay, well. <laughs> All right, let's start then with 23, uh, 65, 97, 119. How many did you say? 10? 10. You've got okay. six more. 176. 211. <laughs> 232. <laughs> 245. 263. And 287. Awesome. Okay, appreciate that. And with that, if you have any ending comments, we are just over um, just over our time here. So again, thank you so much for your time, sharing the Go-Giver way, and really enlightening us with a lot to think about. Well, thank you, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you and everything you do to help so many companies and people. So thank you so much. All right, have a good rest of your day.